as more of an ILO led process or did you feel that um, it was really owned by the government and the social partners? These are two uh, dedicated uh, uh, high ranking officials in the Bacanas, the planning agencies, also the manpower uh, ministry that are part of the G20 who are taking care of the social protection issues. So, uh, so uh, since that, uh, it's not really actually, uh, uh, they are really familiar with the issues. Uh, but of course, uh, at the beginning, we, we, we actually started uh, to work uh, on the paper, uh, on what do you call it, the paper books. And then, uh, that's why I think it's important to, at the beginning, we already have the consultative uh, meetings with the wider audience. So, they can actually also feel the ownership is in their hand. Uh, and of course, uh, as uh, Valerie also mentioned, that uh, um, now, I think since the, in the past six months, the, the Bapadas is interested in to buy in these issues, and then now it's uh, the idea of driving it to process for the uh, I can answer concerning Thailand, which is a, a similar experience, but a bit different. Um, in Thailand, we created the UN Social Protection Fraud Team in uh, March 2010, and one of the uh, first um, key activities of this team was to conduct this assessment. But at the same time, in Thailand, there is a, a partnership between the UN and the government called the UNPATH. Uh, and uh, social protection is considered as a priority, uh, one of the key priorities within the youth path. And the same team on the UN side was, uh, under the leadership of the ILO, heading the social protection part within the youth path, on the, representing the UN for social protection. And on the other side, on the government side, we had the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security. So the UN Social Protection for team which was initiated at the beginning, transformed uh, through the assessment process into a UN Royal Thai government so team on social protection, which conducted the assessment process together. Which means that when the assessment document will be launched, it will be the co-chairs of this UN uh, Royal Thai government um, team on social protection that will launch the report jointly, so MSDHS and, and the ILO representing the others. Yeah? Thank you very much for the presentation, especially the presentation on the process was very uh, inspirational. I have a question, little question to Valerie's uh, presentation. Um, so the, the assessment starts actually with an important step of uh, feeding the data into the, the sheet. Yeah. So, um, as you mentioned, and as we all know that most of the countries really lack of, I would say, reliable data. There's a lot of different types of data, but reliable data to be uh, fit into, um, to, to actually support this kind of important assessment is really uh, not there. So, um, what would be a kind of alternative, for example, a methodology or approach should uh, countries use in, in the data feeding uh, process if they if they don't have let's say like a very reliable data on single population then what uh, would be the, the alternative uh, option or methodology? So uh, first to clarify, the first step is not the costing part; it's really the developing development of this uh, assessment matrix. Uh, and for this exercise, um, you don't need statistical data. Yeah, you need more to understand the legislation, understand how these different schemes are functioning. This is very difficult to do it uh, on your own. You need, this is why also we really need this participatory approach so that we have people from all the ministries, etc. Yeah? The second step, as you were mentioning, is the costing part. And for that, we need reliable data on protect, um, sorry, population data. We need um, data on the economic indicators on the labor market uh, information uh, and on the government budget. Yeah? And we need also projections of this uh, information. So here it's, uh, I think it's, it, it's, really, uh, it's really a challenging process. Uh, and um, 
uh, you need really to uh, to find the, the right institution that has uh, I mean not one single institution can be uh, can be uh, uh, relied on uh, of this process you really need to try to go to uh, to all the actors but usually working with the national statistic office or in Thailand with uh, Histro who has a uh, proper database on many, many uh, schemes is, of course, uh, key and very useful, yeah? Um, even today, when we, uh, we try to have data from some ministries who don't have this culture of uh, building databases, etc., they, they are not in a position to give us um, uh, really uh, reli reliable data sets, yeah? So uh, I agree with you that it's a challenge, but we need to uh, to try to to really uh, work with as many uh, informed person as possible. Yeah. Uh, Jean Claude, maybe you want to add something on on Cambodia when you did the costing in Cambodia, no? I, I think this uh, this question is very relevant, especially in the region. We have in, in most of the countries. I mean, data is the main challenge to. Uh, to get hold of uh, some data, but I think uh, there's always a way around that we can, I mean, use secondary data or we can do estimations from, from what's available. I think there's always some data sources that we are trying to work with. What is important maybe is to document all your assumptions. I would like to ask the colleague from Indonesia the crisis in the process, because you had such a multi-stakeholder group, and you mentioned something that to me for, uh, is going to be the biggest challenge if ever this is about, uh, the buy-in. Um, I, I think maybe for Indonesia, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it was easier to get some buy-in. How did you get such a multi-stakeholder group to turn up around the table? Because especially if we're going to talk about the promise of the government to the people is always that they are doing good, they are do, trying their best. So how to bring them in, especially on a slow discussion? I would love to hear how that took place. And then how did you all decide on who is to be the lead agency? Because there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of negotiation. And, and between government taking the lead, uh, civil society, unions, workers, groups, etc. How was the decision, what was your process to decide who should be the lead agency? Because I think, uh, I see that these are going to be some of the problems going forward. I think I'm answering with the Federalist for any difficult question. Federalist has to actually address it. <laughs> but uh, I think it's not really actually uh, the now is the Indonesia is more democratic uh, countries. Even I think it's more challenge to actually convince uh, people or the, uh, the head of the provincial level, even the high-ranking officials, because uh, they have their own authorities to decide. Even in the provincial level, it could be maybe different with the national one. Uh, so uh, I don't think that is year now uh, but what we did is uh, is trying to actually uh, give some a sh like brainstorm uh, or sharing the, the idea like uh, trying to actually uh, in line with the government priority I think some of the provincial level even though now it's the Indonesian is upgrading from the low to middle income country but there is a huge disparity in terms of the uh, economic uh, or income levels, uh, GDP for instance, uh, equality, Gini coefficient is actually uh, in, in, uh, increasing. So uh, there is an inequality, so some provinces still actually experience in, in dealing with the poverty. So uh, it just actually helps like a little of chat. If you're actually addressing the poverty, what's, uh, and then most of the people graduated from the uh, poverty, uh, because they have actually increased level of income. So what you will do, uh, if they actually uh, impact to the uh, sickness, for instance, dealing with the sickness, uh, there is not any social security scheme available. So it's, 
think of that you have to go beyond that. I mean, how to maintain or how to sustain the people that you graduated from uh, the poverty to to stay uh, or to actually have the uh, uh, to reduce the vulnerability. So, and then the people think uh, about another part. So, we're talking about uh, the huge number of the informal economy workers. How to actually, uh, like we actually learn about the, uh, you know, uh, the, the circles of the goodness. So they they actually trying to see uh, how to address the informal. So this is another way way out that we can, you know, try to perhaps adopt this kind of approach. And since uh, they actually uh, can, you know, uh, like the idea of this. Uh, including also to harmonize all the budget allocated for every line minister. Of course, the line minister are actually executing all the program, but they have to actually make a consultation with the Babada or uh, planning agencies. So that's why uh, we, uh, there's not an entity like the coordinating ministry of the economic affairs, for instance. But we, we, we see that the, the planning agencies have their own also this coordination with the provincial level. So uh, that's why. Mm, when we figure out this is the, the best uh, vehicle to uh, process further uh, the, the process itself, so we, we, we found that the, the institution is the, uh, the best, the best uh, I think, modality to, to process further. But the choice of this uh, champion on the government side is, is really critical because if you have a ministry which is not recognized within the government structure, which is a bit weak in terms of budget allocation or a convincing power, then you are stuck. Yeah? So you really need to have uh, to... Sometimes you, you cannot choose yourself, yeah? because it's uh, naturally they will... Um, the, it's this ministry or that ministry that will be given to you. Yeah? Uh, so uh, it's not easy. So this is why also this assessment process by by involving many more actors, many more ministries, if you can try to find also, uh, in case the, the ministry or the government counterpart that you have is not um, sufficiently recognized, you need also to find other champions. Yeah?